So a quick one to all our viewers and all our audience out there. If you have any business contract with any of the guests who have appeared on the Agribusiness Weekend show, kindly note that the Agribusiness Weekend team will not be heard responsible or liable to any business transaction between a client and any of the guests that has appeared on the show. So please make sure you do all your research and all your confirmations before involving in any business transactions with any guest that has appeared on the show. Thank you so much for always loving Agro Business Weekend. Hello, welcome. I welcome you to another exciting and informative episode of Agro Business Weekend. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Joy Labaran and welcome to that platform where we close the information and communication gap within the agri ecosystem. Kindly do well to follow us on all our social media platforms and please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so. You know, right here on Agro Business Weekend, we got your back on pertaining to anything that has to do with agriculture. Welcome to the show. episode on planting farming and seriously since then we've been getting a lot of comments and questions and pop-up questions so we decided to bring another professional in the planting value chain you know to talk about the commercial planting farming for export really the planting value chain is a gold mine am i correct awesome. that is yet to be untapped so today on set with me is the ceo of rakings agribusiness and services david taiwo popularly known as king david you know i like that name king david he said they call him the king of the farm <laughs> David, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much. All right, so David, like I said, we've been having a lot of comments, um, a lot of questions, pop up questions, follow up questions from the last episode we had on um, planting farming. And so I decided, you know, to let's let's stretch out our arms further and let's reach out to you to, you know, talk about the commercial um, aspect, the commercial. Um, opportunities potentials of planting farming but you know from the comments i got um follow-up questions i got from the last episode i want you in your own way tell us what is the process of starting a planting farm right here in nigeria let's start from there all right thank you so much for having me thank speaking. you you're welcome all right um you know planting farming is the gold mine business in nigeria because um it's something that everybody loves to eat you know um starting it in nigeria requires you getting your land. Okay. Majorly, I don't actually advise people to go and lease land for planting farming. Why? reason is because our people are very funny. You know, once you have done deforestation, which actually takes so much from you, um, a lot comes up, some of the land belongs to family, and, you know, some of them are in Lagos, and they need this. Really? Land. Their land is So after land. you've done the deforestation, family will just rise up? up I agree, no. <laughs> <laughs> You will not actually sign that agreement. Okay. Actually okay, I get Lord that. Yeah. Thereafter, stories upon stories, and you start having a lot of arguments. So I actually advise people to go into it with the mind of actually getting your land. own farm. Yes. Okay. Um, there are areas that has cheap farmland. Okay. You know, um, I tell you for us that actually have farms across Nigeria. Um. Ogun State has one of the most cheapest land for farm, hmm. where you can actually get an acre, an acre for as low as two hundred fifty thousand naira. Oh wow! For one acre, that's six plots. Oh, wow! So, and it's all about getting it to the right people. And if you do that, it's actually the business of farming is something you plan, you don't just rush into it. Okay. So you can actually give yourself some time to put your resources together. You could get the land and get started. And not starting it. Um, 
It's very really commercial purpose, which actually way you can actually make your money. Okay. Because if it's not actually for commercial, if you're just doing it for subsistence, you have to use your money mm. <laughs> where you, you get stuck out of yeah, time. Yeah. You have the strength to work. Mm -hmm. And for commercial, you can actually team up with other people. Okay. Thereby you guys can form a team okay. of um, farmers. And, okay. you know, and I tell you, for me, I have a list of uh, of takers mm. that actually want to take this outside the country. Uh, some Indians, some Chinese guys. Wow. We keep calling every now and then. Wow. But we can't meet up. Wow. The reason is because we can't meet up the market. It's a huge market. Now, there are now starting it. Once you've actually got in your land, deforesting it. Um, if you're using bulldozer, um, right now the cost of deforesting one hectare is about 350000 which is even much more expensive. Than the land. Yeah, I yeah. wanted so, to say that. Absolutely. So now you talked about, about that and not think of using the manual. The manual, you know, our brothers from the north are doing a wonderful job. Okay. Okay. We're going to deforest it. And it has process. Okay. The process is that you play it, then you cut down the trees. Like you see our farm in our videos, mm -hmm. you see where we cut down and cross cut the trees. Okay. And the timing also matters. Okay. You don't go and do deforestation during the rainy season. You oh, okay. In the dry season, okay. they could set fire and your place will get burned. Okay. And if you could do that, then you have an open ground and you can actually do this packing and reborn again. And you have an open land, just like we have in our, in our own farm, like in the video people are actually watching right now. Okay. Now you see it open and it becomes easy. You don't need to use tractor when you want to do plant your farm. Okay. You don't need to plow, you don't need to do ridges. Just make it open and immediately fall on the land and it's soft. Now, co coming to the land, is there a specific kind of land you should have for a planting farming or any random land can go for it? All right, now in that regard, I will tell you that you know, God's only bless us in this country with various kind of land. Okay. Our people mm -hmm. from Benin don't have the looming soil like we have here. Okay, and yeah. They have plenty. Yes. They have plenty. Mm -hmm. So, and if the only land you can plant plantain on is one that actually have gravel, rock, and all. Okay. Because the roots are fiber. Okay. So, you can actually penetrate beyond whatever holes that you have dug for them. Okay. But if it doesn't have stones, rock, and all, it will survive. Oh, okay. Once there is water. Okay. Once there is water. So, the water is the life, right? Absolutely. Okay. Because everything about plantain is water. Mm. And immediately it doesn't have water. Um, like you see in our video, you see them um, be breaking and you know, you see them growing clean. Now the thicker the stand, the bigger your plantain. Mm. That's actually the irony of plantain. Okay. <laughs> so if, if it's big, if, if the tree is big, then you are expecting a bigger bunches. Okay. But if it's slim, just know that you are expecting it. Watch your plant. Absolutely. So okay. that is actually the fun of it. But All it's right. fine. Now, if you've been able to achieve that, I tell you that it's not actually something that will be forever without maintenance. Okay. Planting doesn't like weed. Immediately you have weed in the midst of your planting farm. Just like you can see in our videos, um, you see them open. The next thing that happens is, is trouble with the nutrients. Mm. And all the um, joy in actually doing planting farming is that you can actually combine the two, which is uh, you can apply the organic um, uh, fertilizer, mm -hmm. you can use the manure, which is the chicken droppings. Okay. But you can't use the, the, the waste from pig, it will kill the, the planting. Okay. Now, that is actually the, the, the other part of our planting farm. So now, if you use chicken droppings, it has to be the one that is actually dry. And you mix it up, you know, and add it to the Now, in maintaining it, usually, for every old farmer, everybody knows that after three years, your planting will stop, you know, fruiting. Reason is because you will have so much suckers all around you. Okay. They will all be struggling for nutrients. Yeah. And the nutrients is coming from the same mother so mother oh, okay. 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 that you planted that is okay. actually producing. Now it is not very, very important that you to soccer them. And it is this soccer that you sell out. Now for some people, if they refuse to remove those suckers, what happens is they you form clusters and the bodies will be very tiny. Or you don't even have any all around the year. 
Mm. Now, absolutely. So now, if you if you actually starting planting family, the best time to start is April. Is it what? April. 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 Okay. The reason is because you would have used January, February to do your land preparation. You mm -hmm. have them open, then once rain start falling, mm -hmm. that is the best time to actually commence your planting. Now with that, you'll be able to have them very strong before the rain stop in November. Because okay. the day the rain stops, mm -hmm. it is the remaining water that you will use to sustain. Now okay. without water, they start going back, becoming slim and they start breaking. And now there's always this time of the year that we often have heavy wind. Like you see in our video, that heavy wind blowing, if it's not properly planted and the root is not properly dipped into the ground while you were planting it, they will start falling down. You, you see this video where you see our farm, you see the wind, you know, shaking them, shaking them. See now with all these things you are saying, I'm already scared, you know, <laughs> of this value chain. But, but what is the hope for the farmer? The hope is that once they start coming out, um, there are two markets for planting. The first one is the processors. Okay. They buy per kg. Okay. While the open markets buy per dozen. Mm, okay. So if you have these um, two different people, uh, each of them will be asking you, how do you want to sell? And the, the, the joy is that people come to the farm to buy. If you want to do that, now you buy less because they pay for the transportation to oh, take yeah. it away. Yeah. But if you're taking it to them, yeah. you add your transportation and also margin. That's it. So, which is the two different things. So, but the, the, the joy is that the market is there. Because once you maintain your plantain and you have good punches, quite a well. We sell those in for as much as 20,000, 25,000, 30,000 based on the sizes. Okay. But the, the, the funniest thing is if the bunches are not so well, they mm. buy them for as low as 5,000. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's to tell you that the maintenance matters. So if you can maintain the weed, wheat free farm gives you um, good results. Okay. All right. Now, people love the bigger bunches. And, you know, um, to get bigger bunches, the soccer you plant really matters. Okay. We have the elephant giants. Mm. We have the Cameroon giants. You know, in Cameroon, that is their best food. Plantain? Yes. Oh, wow. So, you know, the way we, in Nigeria, we're talking about our uh, people eat uh, about and yam and all. Over there, plantain is what the Cameroon people enjoy. Wow. So, you see big bunches over there. And this, that is what we have actually invited here. So, you see the bigger bunches and you plant them and then they hybrid. Because the hybrid will be able to resist the challenges. You know, because a lot happens. Now, one of the major problems we often have is grasshopper. While the planting is coming up, you see grasshopper, they will come to attack it. So, the one that can actually resist, because some will not be able to resist, okay. and they will die. Okay. If it is just ordinary one. That's why when you're getting your suckers, it's, it is very, very important getting from a trusted farmer or someone that you can actually see his own farm. Okay. Because we have a lot of online farmers now mm -hmm. that are farmers and that do audio farming. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, okay. They've never been there. Yeah. So, but for us, we tell you what: this is the farm. This is what you get. This is what we are getting. This is the soccer. So you can actually point to what you're getting, and you actually take it out from the farm. Mm. And you know, with that, you know what you're getting. So the, the rest becomes your maintenance. Not just like, oh, I want soccer. Give me soccer, and you just get money. So. When you understand all this, because uh, each time yeah, another major challenge that often affects planting farm is nematode. Nematode actually goes to the root to eat the root. Please say that word again. Nematode. Nematode, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if it eats the root, you just see it just get broken. Mm. And you'll be wondering, what's happening to my plantain? Absolutely. Now, for the nematode, you know, when you have that attack, if you're seeing it getting broken, the next thing to do, because for us, we understand them because it's what we do. Now, before they attack other ones, we will treat the one that is affected. Okay. Just like um, you have infection on one. Um, oh, so it can easily creep to the others. Absolutely. Oh, wow. So you may have seen or you observe that mm -hmm. because they are living. And just like human beings, we fall sick. Planting also can fall sick by having these attack and diseases. So you may have seen it on one. 
tree, treat it with matricide. If you know you are applying the matricide, you can take care of that and that is already gone and the rest you enjoy. But most importantly, our spacing also matters. For one acre of land, um, if you're actually using 3x3 three three, um, feet spacing, you're going to plant 400 stands hmm. on one acre. Okay. And if you're using 3x2, um, um, that means three on three, three row, uh, the rows and column, okay. you have three feet by two feet. Okay. If you are using that, you will have 666. If the land is 120 by 60 on the plot. Okay. So that would keep, because this is very, very important. So you have to do all these maths before yes. you start. Absolutely. Mm. You know, because once you are buying land, they will tell you, this land was you know, for southwest Nigeria, it is 100 and 120 by 60. But in south south, the land over there is 100 by 50. Mm, yeah, yeah. That you're buying one plot. Mm -hmm. So that is what we use to do your calculation. So before you actually start, you must know the total land space and then be able to plan based on what you have here. So now it is important that um, you understand what you want to do. Like some people do planting farming for the multiplication of the soccer. Okay. What they do is that they, they supply other farmers. They are not okay. producing plantain. Okay. They are only interested because the value chain is very, very large. Okay, so you can decide not to do plantain production. Absolutely. You can just decide to not producing the soccer. All right, so I'm 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 very sure that some persons are wondering, so how do I get like if I want to call results, I want to so that those numbers displayed on the screen are numbers that you can reach us with, you can reach King David with, and you can reach um, our in-house analyst for any of your questions and any of any inquiries that you want to make of on the agribusiness weekend platform. Please feel free to call those numbers displayed on the screen. Now, before we before we go on break, um, tell us what are the opportunities embedded in export of plantain. All right, the opportunity there is that um, amazingly we've not been to satisfy our local market, but the, the export market is also very rich. Okay. Like um, right now, Brazil is the country that's actually leading in the area of the export of plantain. Wow. So they are doing excellently well in the area of plantain production. Wow. Massive. You know, I used to think that plantain is a Nigerian food. Ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> ah, 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 wow. Okay. It's not. You know, it's a global um, food that we eat all across the world. Wow. So the, for the export market, it's a huge market. But you know, before you can take plantain out, because it's a perishable product, mm -hmm. and also get ripe mm -hmm. in the process of uh, yeah. logistics, if you don't actually expose it back again, and if it takes too long, it's pretty changes. Now, you need the hydrator. Okay. You need the hydrator if you actually want to do that. But it's another opportunity for other investors to come in to actually use the hydrator with the water and also take it away you know to to punch it amazing because you know you have plantain flour and a lot of people love to eat it yeah especially the diabetic patient mm -hmm. that they are actually avoiding excessive sugar in the body and all so uh globally people want to always change taste and you know a lot of countries now also you know coming to nigeria asking for this like some of these indian guys well, initially they called me like, can you give us five ton a week? And I'm like, how is that possible? That's huge. Yeah. Per week, not even per month. Because, you know, planting is very light. Look at all this, um, the, 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 even our home markets, you can't really meet up with it. But, however, for the international market, it's very, very huge as well. Mm. But it's a perishable product. So it is important you get the hydrator. But however, I still advise people, like, if you're not interested in planting or you get the drift of Okay. And, you know, like, if you look at the ecosystem, some people can actually be drying it and supplying it to people that produce the flower. So you must not necessarily be a farm. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely must. So, if you actually um, dry it, like, dry the water from it, to supply it to those, turn it into powder. And then, if you have the resources as well, you can as well turn it to powder. Once you blend it, you know, people start eating it now. They mix it up and they eat it. So that is planting the um, flour as well. So, but like our own market is still huge. Mm -hmm. Until you talk about the farming market. So, however, uh, whichever sector, sector someone chooses to come in, uh, the market is still. 
that's just it, that's true. Um, for the those that are actually trying to get, you have in Ibom, you have in Bondo, you have in Benin, you have in the other, all these are area where you get a lot of fighting on a large scale. Ekiti too is also there, but you don't make it the challenge is Ekiti. Farmers coming from that axis, the southwest, is that um, they rock in their own area, it's more. Okay, then. Yeah, they are more rock and it depends on the location where you're talking about. Something that everybody can as well. You, you know, King David, if we don't if if I don't leave you, you're gonna be here till the end of the day. But let's take a short break. When we come back, the show continues. Don't go anywhere. Hey, what's up, what's up? This is Femi Ibamari from Sterling Bank. I'm right here on the Agri Business Weekend Show. Watch out for the next time. Welcome back. You're still watching Agribusiness Weekend, your favorite agricultural show. And King David, indeed, he's the man of the farm. No, no, the king of the farm. David, you've been saying a lot, a lot of, a lot about planting farming. Seriously, seriously, you're making me get interested in this old, in this old planted valley chain. Okay, so um, this section is usually called the farmer's game. That is because usually when my guest comes to the show, I want them to have fun before they leave. So it's not just about you. Yet. Yes, you've poured out all your wealth of knowledge, but let's have you have some fun. Okay, so David, I have 10 questions on my list. Yeah, so you're going to be answering, you're going to pick three questions from those questions randomly. Okay. So let me get your first number and I ask you, that's how it goes, your first number. Number three, David, recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Lord's Prayer, our Father, what in heaven? Love you, no, no, you know when you when you are doing that, they say where you put your hand. That's how okay. they were taught okay. in school. Oh, good. Our Father who art in heaven, I love you, thy name. Thy kingdom come. I love you, thy earth. It is in heaven. Give all this day our daily bread. I caught you there. I caught oh. you there. I caught you there, <laughs> David. <laughs> it's been a long time, man. It's been a long it's time, been a long right? Time, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm very sure you never knew. No, 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 no. I can never make that kind of mistake. I can never make that kind of mistake. <laughs> All right. So let me get your second number. Okay, number six. Number six. Okay, David, say a word, say a parable in your dialect, and give us the meaning. A, a parable in my dialect. Yes. Mm. Okay, Latin. Strong mini. The mini. Um, I'm gonna say that in English before I give you the mini. Meaning that um, for stop not to actually punch my face, my eyes. I will see me from afar. Meaning that when you see something coming from afar, you actually get yourself prepared. Meaning when you see something harmful coming from afar, you get yourself. Paid for it. I told you he's the king of the farm. He <laughs> go go go. Okay, say, say, say that again. Say that again. <laughs> All right, let me get your last number. All right, um, number seven. Number seven. So number seven, David. I'm gonna say a word. Then you use that word to sing a song. Okay. Please don't compose your song. Okay. At least sing song that when I when I hear it. Okay. Okay. Somebody has sang the song somewhere. You know. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the the first word here is love. I love you, Lord, and you mind me. Find oh, with your hands to Jesus. Next word is life. Life, 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 life. I like this over Really? Like Are you rapping? <laughs> King David is also a rapper. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank 
<laughs> I can tell you're a rapper. David, thank you so much for coming on the show. And on behalf of I and the Agro Business Weekend team, we want to give you this package oh, to say you. thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the opportunity. And so, thank you very much. This is where we draw the wrap up on today's episode of Agro Business Weekend. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. I'm pretty sure you've learned a lot about the planting value chain. Till I come your way next time, please don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like I always say, you'll be the first to get notifications whenever anything pops up on our platform. Until I come your way next time, I'm Joy Labaran and do have a great weekend.